Hi, my name is Peter Coffin, and intellectual property law absolutely benefits those with the resources to utilize it, regardless of what it says. Back in the low society days, if you remember that, uh, I was friendly with a guy by the name of Chud Logic. Now, he and I both experienced changes over time that kind of diverted our paths from each other. But back when the H bomb stuff went down, he kind of had the right take on it. I enjoy him, fun streams. So, not so recently, Chud Logic covered a nine minute video by an account called Dark Viper AU. Now, Dark Viper AU has it out for commentary channels and reaction content. He believes that it destroys the YouTube ecosystem, which is wrong. If people think that the highbrow celebrity can exist without the TMZs, um, they're wrong. Commentary channels and reaction content basically pick up the slack and keep big names in people's minds. There's a reason why H Bomber Guy puts out a single video a year and his fan base completely obsesses over the content of that video for months and months and months. It's because nothing else is happening. I, I don't think that people understand to the extent commentary channels actually prop up the YouTube ecosystem. It shouldn't even be something I have to explain. Something that gives attention to something is useful in an attention economy. Duh. Dark Viper believes that commentary content removes value from real content, from the real creators. Uh-oh, we're starting to sound like the Plato documentary, so uh, maybe watch that. It's very relevant, I'll say. So in order to understand this, you gotta understand fair use, which is a legal doctrine that promotes freedom of expression by permitting the unlicensed use of copyright protected works in certain circumstances. Section 107 of the Copyright Act provides the statutory framework for determining whether something is a fair use and identifies certain types of uses, such as criticism, that one's the key one, comment, another key one, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research as examples of activities that may qualify as fair use. Now, just straightforwardly broadcasting content in the form of a watch party, for instance, there's not really any precedent that protects the simple, straightforward streaming of content without pausing it and talking. Like, you have to add something to the content. Now, Chud Logic watched this nine minute video and it took him 35 minutes to do it. He paused it, he commented on it, he explained it, he went back and forth with his audience on points about it. It's clear cut critique. In other words, it's the type of content that fair use open and shut protects. That being said, Dark Viper filed a copyright notice and indicated he is more than happy to take it to court. He got a lawyer, he's uh, grandstanded a bit about it, he made a video about it, which I'm not going to put here because apparently he likes to send copyright strikes if you use his content, whether he's supposed to or not. According to precedent, according to any case that has been pursued like this, Chud Logic is in the right. He would straightforwardly win in a legal battle. Um, the precedent that you would compare this to is uh, the Ethan Klein case that they won and was a landmark case, which basically upheld everything that I've said to you in this video so far. So you might think that Chud Logic should fight this in court. However, this is where we start to get into my critique of intellectual property law. You see, the Plato documentary I made specifically addresses intellectual property law as a facet of the property dynamics enforced by the ruling class of today's society. The H Bomber Guy video talks about a dearth of lawsuits that have been filed against large companies by small creators who have been plagiarized and have gotten anything out of it. There's almost none, and there are no particularly recent ones. This is a very specific example of why it's important to look at this not from this godhole analysis that H-Bomb put forward, that people plagiarize because they need to feel complete, but instead to talk about the systemic aspects of property, uh, particularly incentives and rewards, and the laws that justify and maintain these dynamics. What Dark Viper EU is doing here is a bluff. He is not on the right side of the law. Precedent is not with him. He would outwardly lose. However, 
In terms of resources, it's completely uneven. Chud Logic is not a large creator by any stretch. He seemingly makes normal people money, which not an insult at all. Honestly, if you can manage that on YouTube content, good on you. But Dark Viper is on a completely different level. Chud Logic has about 30,000 subscribers, regularly gets between about 10 and 20,000 views per video. Dark Viper has 1.5 million subscribers and regularly gets 100 to 200 to sometimes 400 to 500,000 views per video range. Dark Viper also uploads daily. So basically you're talking about somebody with a normal person's income against somebody who for years and years has done quite well on YouTube. But Dark Viper has the resources to bluff because although Chud Logic probably could take him to court and win, it would not be a straightforward process because Dark Viper has the money to pursue. Now, this is similar to when companies have the money to pursue some kind of copyright thing. And this is where my experience with YouTube copyright shit starts to come in. So I am the YouTube old guard, so to speak. I came in on YouTube in 2006. I have a long YouTube career, and it started as a satirist and a song parody writer. The amount of copyright takedowns and DMCA bullshit I've dealt with as a human being is insane. It's staggering. I've made song parodies, I've done clutch cargo where you edit your mouth over other content like movie trailers or TV shows or whatever, and it's something that I've dealt with a great deal over the course of my YouTube career, if that's what you want to call this. I have found that companies will bluff like crazy. If they assume that you don't know that criticism protects the use of content, or that you don't know other criteria for fair use, they will straightforwardly tie you up in DMCA or even copyright strikes until you make it clear that you know what you're talking about. I learned how to file counter notices that noted that my content didn't take up the same market as the original content, it was often critical specifically of the original content, and various other criteria that would be specific to each individual work. Here's the thing, unless a company has an agenda, they usually stop once you demonstrate you actually understand the law. Unless they really want to stop you from saying something, they don't pursue it legally. I've never had, even one time, a company pursue it legally with me, and I've been up against Warner Brothers, I've been up against Viacom, I've been up against various uh, record labels, and as long as you're doing content that is legitimately covered in fair use and demonstrably so via precedent, they generally don't care. However, I have seen them weaponize this stuff when they have an agenda. And Dark Viper is doing that. Now, he's obviously not as big as Warner Brothers, duh, but he does have the resources to utilize these laws for an agenda. Again, he dislikes commentary and reaction content. He thinks that it is an overall value destroyer for real content. I think this guy fundamentally misunderstands that commentary and reaction content ultimately helps him, just like I think Nintendo fundamentally misunderstands that. And emotionally, it might be a detriment to him, but financially, it ultimately isn't. If you don't have all these commentary channels, you don't have large content creators, at least not on the scale we have them. There's a reason why they work so hard to curate fandoms around stuff. It's because they need ecosystems that work while they are not putting out new content that they can profit from. So again, if Chud Logic could pursue this to the end, he would most likely win because there's already precedent set in this realm. But can he? Can Chud Logic spend the time and the money on this type of a thing in the same way that Dark Viper can't? The answer is no. He absolutely can't. If in my fights with Warner Brothers or Viacom or whoever, if they decided that they were going to press it to court, I wouldn't have the resources to take on one of those entities on the level that they would to take me on. Dark Viper has the resources to utilize these property laws in a manner that it doesn't really matter what the end result is, he can hurt Chud Logic. He can beat Chud Logic, even if 
Uh, on the paper, it says he didn't. If Chud Logic has to spend $100,000 in court to win this thing, it probably fucks his life up pretty bad, actually, because that's a lot of money. Uh, but the point is, even with clear legal precedent that puts Chud Logic in the right, it would be so hard to actually defend himself that it's probably not worthwhile for him. While there are creators going, you gotta fight it, man! You're in the right, man! And this isn't taking a dump on them at all. I completely understand that fervor and that anger at the unjust aspect of this. You also have to think about what's possible, what's within your capabilities as a human being. It's probably not within his capabilities to withstand a high-profile lawsuit at this point in his life. Maybe five years from now, that would be different. I don't know. He does seem to be on an upward trajectory, and good for him. But this Dark Viper character seems to be pretty deranged. Not only does he have an agenda against the commentary community, he also uses uh, DMCA takedowns to remove when people re-upload him using the N-word. That's, that's not the proper usage of that mechanism at all. But neither is any of this. He's using it for purposes beyond enforcement of his property rights. And I would argue that that is ultimately the purpose of property rights. Because if the little guy, the non-owner, starts to get a foothold, the big guy doesn't have to play fair. He's got the resources not to play fair. And then you start needing ethical justifications, like the whole plagiarism controversy. You need to start marking certain individuals as bad guys who shouldn't have channels. They should just delete their channel. My hope with this video is to try to key people in on the idea that it's not just about, like, stop copying. There's ideologies at play. There's selective enforcement of rules. There's people who use rules in order to create problems for other people, even if the rule says the opposite of the problem. A lot of the time, a dispute might be costly, and that's the whole point. It privileges the big owners of more property. To bring it back, if the thing we rewarded was the labor, and keep in mind, materially speaking, there's so much that has to change for that to be the thing that we actually reward. But if that was the case, I would argue none of this would truly matter in any way. So there's some buttons under this video that I would like you to lick, slurp all over them, become a subscriber, and uh, money me. Go to patreon.com slash Peter Coffin and money me. And if you got an hour and 40 minutes, go watch my uh, Play-Doh documentary. If you don't, uh, you know, there's a lot of shorter videos here on this channel. Uh, watch them. They're all there. I'm, I'm happy if you watch any of them. Thanks. I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.